Yay, we're recording. Happy Tuesday, October 26th, our last Tuesday of the month. Um, last payday of the month, and we're heading into November, and literally a month, like literally, we're less than two months away from Christmas. I <laughs> think it's just nuts. Um, this year is going so fast, and before we know it, we're going to be in January, y'all. We're going to be in heading into our biggest month. So it's super exciting. Um, and I'm super excited. I want to say really quick at the beginning of this Zoom, um, I am looking for people to fill out the schedule for the rest of the year. Um, Tuesday, noon, leadership Zoom. So if you're 80K, 200K, um, and you don't have to be holding rank, um, but if you've hit those ranks and you've been in the company for a couple of years, message me. I would love to get you on the schedule. and. Um, even if I've interviewed you before, that's okay. Um, we can, if I haven't interviewed you in a year or so, let's get you back on the schedule. People need to hear your story. We have so many new people that have come in that have never heard your story before. So make sure you reach out to me. I would love to get you on the schedule um, for either November or December or January. So with that said, I'm super excited to have my good friend, Brittany Strike on today, who her last name's going to be changing pretty soon because um, she's getting married. And if you guys don't know Brittany, she's freaking awesome. Um, like she's one of my most favorite people on the planet. You look so pretty, Britt. Oh, yeah. This is this is what you no, get today. You, you always look good. Seriously. You don't even need makeup. <laughs> you have like one of those places that don't need makeup. Um so I'm so, so excited to have you on today. And I want to thank you for, <laughs> for saying last minute that you would do this. I'm like, hey, somebody. Yeah, wants- I mean, you, you did message me at like 2 a.m. I'm like, dude, I'm sleeping. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm like, hey, can you do my Zoom in the morning? <laughs> like, um, um, so we do have a lot of new people on and I haven't had you on in a minute. So I kind of wanted you to start with you know, what you were doing before you got into this industry and then how you kind of got involved with network marketing and how you found Lavelle and then we'll kind of go from that point. Um, yeah, so just celebrated five years with Lavelle. How freaking crazy is that, Lisa? I know, that right? Freaking flew by. Um, yeah, so before network marketing, um, my ass was chilling on the unemployment couch, me and Stephanie Grachik. We both shared an unemployment couch, actually. Um, We both, um, there was downsizing in our corporate jobs, and we were unemployed for, man, I don't even know, maybe like two months. And then network marketing kind of fell into our lap a little bit. We were in a different company for almost two years. Um, Yeah, almost two years, we were with another company, and then kind of got thrown thrive samples at us (laughs) I was pretty mad I was uh me and Steph were really deep well going gung-ho into this other company had a large team pretty committed over there and then all of a sudden Steph's like well we're changing companies I'm like I'm not gonna talk to you forever (laughs) I was so mad at her I was so mad because I just, I was scared to do a different company. I don't know, you know, that, that scared feeling. Um, and then, and I refused to try the product. She tried to give me some threat. She tried to give me some thrive. I refused to try it. Um, and then all of a sudden I had a six day mini experience show up in my mailbox from Lisa K. Fuller and I had no choice but to try it. So I tried it. <laughs> and I was even more mad again that it worked for me because I didn't want to change companies, but thank God that we did. Um, I am definitely a day two thriver. Day one, I really didn't get the full, you know, shebang experience that most people do. Day one, I'm a day two thriver. Day two, after trying the product, you guys, I tried to take a nap with my children. I was a stay at home mom. And I just tried to take a nap with them and I was mad that I couldn't because since I couldn't nap, I had no choice but to like clean and do stuff around the house, right? (laughs) Um, So that was, that was it. Um, After the, I want to say it was day 10 that 
we took the plunge to change over to Thrive. So I know in the beginning, <laughs> you see, I think everybody, everybody's on a different journey and some people, it takes a minute for them to go, okay, this is like, I'm in this all the way. And I remember in the beginning, we would like give you such a hard time because we're like, why are you posting about this? Why aren't you like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you have so, such a huge network. <laughs> okay. So. As I said, we're in another company. I just wanted, I wanted to do it. I didn't want to. We were taught all of the wrong things about network marketing in the beginning. Oh, Britt, you're cutting out. I think you're going through, I think you're going through like an area where you're cutting out. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay, I, I definitely, I shouldn't be, maybe it was just a patch, because where I'm going, I definitely shouldn't lose service, but. Dang it, am I the only one she's cutting out for you guys, or is it everybody? No, we lost her. Oh, she's cutting out, she's cutting out on me. We'll get her back. I know we'll get her back. So Stephanie, tell me what, tell me what she did. <laughs> well, besides her being an asshole, I mean, <laughs> don't know no, Brittany, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, so literally me and Brittany got into the biggest fight. Um, she was like, how dare you? Everybody's going to hate you. Nobody's going to trust you. Nobody's going to come with you and blah, blah, blah. So after she tried it, she was like legit, like she was telling you guys, she was very, very upset that that it worked for her. Well, I know she'd probably tell you guys a story um, as well. At that time, she was going through a divorce. Um, so single mom, stay-at-home mom now, obviously, because she didn't have a job. And so she had no choice, like legit no choice to make this work. As a matter of fact, her vehicle was in the process of being repossessed. And so I'm like, here you go. You're welcome. You, you have to do something with this, like get 12 K you can get a bonus, like get your car payment paid for. So she did. She was like, she was still mad at me. She wasn't like Lisa said, but she wasn't posting a whole lot because behind the scenes, she was mainly branding herself. She was getting, she was building her network market, her, her social media. Um, she was trying, like, I should say she was trying to find Brittany, you know, started doing makeup and stuff like that. And yeah. Um, so as soon as we, we got her 12 K, she was able to get a Mercedes and then she still didn't. It, it's still, I think she just sat there for damn near two years. She didn't want to post about anything. And then sure shit, one day, um, one of the leaderboards came out and she went balls to the walls for 30 days and she grabbed a $35,000 one-time cash paid out bonus. And I think that really opened up her eyes where she was like, all right, here we go. F it, we're here. You know, she came into my house at 630 in the morning with two bottles of wine and was like, get up, bitch. I'm getting this bonus. <laughs> so it was crazy. Um, and I, I remember to... that because it was yeah. like, what the heck? Just yeah, that happened? was a lot of fun. There you are. You're back. <laughs> I, I don't know why I cut out. I wasn't even going through a bad spot, but hopefully it doesn't happen again. So your sister was just talking about how you like got all pumped up because that leaderboard came out and you're like, I'm getting this $35,000 bonus. <laughs> and all of a sudden oh, you came yeah, out of nowhere. That was, so that was two years. So like she was, Stephanie was saying, like I, I had Lisa yelling at me. I had Chas yelling at me, Stephanie yelling at me. Like, why are you guys posting? I I wanted to get people to like, trust me and like, believe what I say you got to do. Right. <clears throat> so I was just branding myself. I spent two years branding myself. I was still maintaining thrive. I was still 12 K and then I did get 40 K, you know, just kind of by doing 
kind of the bare minimum, like helping more with my team in the backside than really going balls to on social media. It was how I was building my thrive. Um, and then, you know, I was just getting kind of sick of working that nine to five. My life consisted of, I was a single mom. I worked nine to five. I got, brought my girls to daycare, got them from work, daycare, gymnastics, home, repeat. Like that was my life. I was raising them pretty much myself. And I was sick of not having any time in the world. And it was about two years. I was 40K. And it was November 2nd. So Thrive launched a leaderboard November 1st. And then November 2nd, I was like, screw it. I'm going to make a post. Like, that's how much I never posted. I made a post about Thrive. And from that one post alone, I think that one posted like almost 600 comments and people were like, what the hell is this? What are you doing? It was a before and after photo. And I was like, okay, I started signing a whole bunch of people. And then I got on that leaderboard and I saw my name. It was November 2nd. I saw my name as number one for $35,000, but I had to maintain that all month. And so this is something where I will always tell you guys where it comes down to your mindset, where if you want to quit your job, if you want to just have some extra money, if you want to get to a rank, you really get yourself into a mindset where you, you have no other choice and you do what needs to get done to do that, okay? So I saw my name November 2nd as number one on the leaderboard and I had to maintain that the entire month. And y'all, leaderboards are nuts, okay? Leaderboards are, are crazy. It is hard. It is a lot of work to do. So this was my life, and I'm not even, not exaggerating at all. The entire month of November in 2018, I believe it was, um, from November 2nd to the end of the month, I <clears throat> raised my children myself. I brought them to daycare, to school, to I went to work. On the way back to work, got them, went to gymnastics, fed them, and made them fed, repeat, okay? All of that craziness by myself, I still enrolled over 386 new promoters and new, prom and new customers in one month. That was my PPA. That is so crazy. Yeah. And I, I even took sleep away from myself because I knew that this was what I needed. Like I had no other choice. If I wanted to quit my job, I needed that $35,000 to pay a year's ahead of, of my rent. Like I had no choice. That was my mentality. So what did I all do? When, instead of when I was going to work, instead of listening to music, I was listening to recorded Zooms. I was listening to podcasts. When I had a break at work, because I couldn't have my phone during work. So when I had a break at work, I was in my car following up with people, messaging my team, working the business. When I was at my kids' gymnastics, I was talking to the moms there. You know, like I was working every single place I could. And instead of sleeping at night <laughs> for an entire month, I put my phone right side up on brightness, on the loudest. So if I got a message at 1 to 5 a.m., I woke up to it because we're worldwide and time zones are different. I didn't let any opportunity pass me because I knew that's what I needed to do. And it worked. Not only did I get that $35,000 bonus, I also got 80K that month. Um, so I doubled, literally doubled my business because I think I went into that month at like 38K. I wasn't maintaining 40K. So I doubled my business. I got $35,000 one time paid out. Like that next Tuesday, I had 35 grand in my account. So I went, I quit my job. I paid a year's ahead of, I gave my landlord a $13,000 check was which is still to this day, absolutely crazy that I could actually physically do that. Like coming from having literally nothing, no money at all. I gave my landlord $13,000 and I have to worry about rent for an entire year. So rent was paid for and Thrive was paying for my Cadillac. So my two biggest things were taken care of. So now, now that I was able to quit my job, I still had extra money. I brought my girls to Disney World. I still had extra money after that. And, um, it just exploded from there because I saw the vision. I believed in it. I knew what I was doing. And then three months later, two months later, three months later, 
um, I went 200 K and got another hundred thousand dollar bonus because it was a rank advancement bonus. So it's all about timing and it's all about your mindset. If you literally just say, okay, I have no choice. I need to do this. And you do what you need to do to get it done. You can do it. And yeah. And I know you and I were talking, um, yesterday, <laughs> just in general, like I did a call with our team and I'm like, y'all, I get it. Like, I don't want to deny that, you know, sometimes we hit ups and downs in this business and sometimes months are slow. And I've been doing this for 12 years and November and December for me have always been slow. And then, you know, January, it all starts coming back around. And yeah. we were talking, we were talking about that. And what is your take? Because I know there's a lot of people this time of year that get super antsy. You know, they're in, they're in our inboxes. Oh my God, my month's so slow or my paycheck's down or, you know, they're in complain mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, so brace yourselves because I'm, pretty blunt I don't get it <laughs> I so okay come you guys comment how long you uh, put a comment in here how long you've been in network marketing or you've been with Lavelle how long have you been with Lavelle because I'll I'll speak to those like this will make sense to people that have been in for longer than 12 months okay which is every single comment I'm seeing so my thing is is number one this is a business this is your we own a business I just preached this to my team yesterday for like 30 minutes. So they're going to hear it again. We, we own a business. It's not a job. It's not a regular salary where every single month is going to be the same. You can go to any business in your hometown right now and ask them, what, what are those slow months? What are your slower months? And you can bet that they will have a certain time frame that's slower than other months. That's just, that's a business, you guys. So if you've been in it longer than 12 months, and you feel that right now is slow, tell me how was January through May for you? Everyone comment what January through May is like in Lavelle. Like, let's tell people, right? Because I see there are a couple that are like six or three months. Hit a new rank, it's crazy, it's awesome, it's freaking insane. You guys, that's the business. So if you don't, if you don't do what you need to do right now, which is one with it, stay consistent, do your work, keep growing, show people that you still, you're, you're still here. If you don't, if you don't keep that positivity, that mindset, you're not going to set yourself up for success come January and May. January and May, we all know is going to be crazy just by natural design. It always has been. So do what you need to do now to set yourself up for your new rank in January through May. If you're gonna complain about it being slow, then why, why are you complaining about being a business owner? Like that's just what comes with being a business owner, right? Like I even went to my sister's last yesterday. I'm like, I don't get it. Like why I, it's, it's, it's the, it's comes with the territory. We own a business. So it's, it's us doing what we need to do right now to set us up, to set us up. Come January, when you hear that there's might be a rank advancement or a new rank or whatever it is, how close are you going to be to that because of the work you put in right now? Or are you going to spend 15 minutes of your day complaining to your upline or sideline or somebody about not getting what you want right now? Because that's 15 minutes that you could be doing a lot in. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. But I mean, if you own any other business, like if I owned a salon, I wouldn't go, okay, well, you know, this month is slow. So I'm just going to close down. You don't do right? that. Like you show up every day. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I, don't, like, I don't get it. So I don't, so, I don't want to interrupt, but this is Lydia. And I have something that I need to add to what you're saying, because it's one bazillion percent true. Is it okay if I chime in quickly? Yes. So ahead. my parents owned a business when I was growing up and, um, we, our slow season was the summer and we would, we would do a lot of sales during Christmas because it was a catering business. And so people would come buy Christmas presents and baskets and all of those things. You guys, we lived off of the money that we made from 
November to January. That's what our family lived off of, but we planned for that every single year. So what Brittany and Lisa and everybody are telling you is, is very, very true. Like we could not have gotten through the summer months if we didn't plan for, you know, be prepared and save money through the winter months. So Lisa, you said something the other day about, you know, you need to live in a way that, you know, plans for these seasons to happen. But it's very much true what they're saying, that this is a legit thing in every single industry. Every single business knows when their boom time is, when their slow time is, and they plan accordingly. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's just what you're saying is one bazillion percent fact in any industry. Right. And I, and like I said yesterday, you know, you, the, the best advice I've ever been given in this industry was live off your worst months, make your, you know, whatever you're doing financially with your family, with your household, as far as what you can afford should be based off your worst months, not your best. <laughs> like that way, you know, you can always get by and prepare, you know, and for those people that have not been in network marketing before, they're kind of like, oh, I haven't seen this happen. Well, like Brittany said, this is a business. Britt, I also wanted to ask you um, about Facebook groups, because I know you're like me. And I know one of the biggest ways you built your business is through groups. Talk to people a little bit about how they can get into groups and how they can do it. So yes, I have done nothing but preach and understand groups for five, six years now, maybe. I spent, yeah, five solid years. I got over 20,000 followers from groups. That was my thing. Now, I'll tell you guys about groups, but do not... The problem, the, the big problem is that so many times we limit ourselves to one thing. Don't just limit yourselves to groups. Don't just limit yourselves to fake Facebook. Don't just limit yourselves to Instagram. We have, I was telling my team yesterday, I'm like, for those people that feel stuck or can't grow their network, and I'm like, you can honestly tell me that you do everything. So if you do everything, that means you post one to three reels a day on Instagram, one to three TikToks on TikTok, and one to three reels on Facebook reels, because Facebook reels is a new thing. Like there's so many different platforms and there's so many different things in that platform that we can do. I love Facebook groups. Like I said, I that's how I gained my following the past five years. Now that Facebook reels came out, I really haven't been as in tapped into groups because when Facebook reels launched, I had, I think, 23,000 followers, and then my Reels came out. It was brand new. Everyone wanted to know what Facebook Reels was. I doubled in 10 days. Now I'm at over 40,000 followers in just 10 days because of Facebook Reels. I think I'm almost I'm closer to 50,000 50, followers just because of Facebook Reels, but you guys, that's because it's a new thing. It, people are, people are going to be on the new thing in the platform. So I'm loving that. And I'm telling you guys, just don't limit yourself to doing just one thing. Facebook groups, it all comes down to what are you branding yourself as? And this is what I took. I took two years, but that's because no one was really teaching branding. We didn't know what branding was. Now you have all of these things to help you with branding. If you're going to go to a Facebook group or if you're going to make a reel or a, a post or something and you want people to follow you, when they go to your Instagram, when they go to your Facebook, tell me what are they going to see? Like, go ahead and comment that. What is your Facebook going to tell me about you? I actually did this with a couple people at the VIP event on um, Saturday because they were asking me and I looked at her. And Jamie's like, yep, we spent the whole time talking about this shit because <laughs> they were like, they were like, I help me. I don't get it. And I looked at her Facebook and I'm like, your, I straight up said to her, I'm like, you're a Facebook ad. I wouldn't follow you. And if it's all that you're portraying to people, like give people a reason to follow you. If you're going to go into groups, she's like, well, I'm in like hairstylist groups. I'm like, that's great. Yes, that's your thing. She had purple hair, freaking bomb. But you don't portray that on your Facebook. If you're going to go into these groups and tell people to follow you, they better see that on your Facebook. They better see that on your Instagram and not just vomiting thrive. So when you go into groups, you guys, 
these things that you're telling me about what you are go into those groups. Don't limit yourself. Now, if you go to my Facebook, what you'll get from Brittany Strike is makeup, beauty, women empowerment, family, thrive, travel. That's all that you'll see on my timeline, all. But I'm not limiting myself to that because when you go into my stories, you will see I'll cook keto recipes. I will have just my random things throughout the day. I'm telling you my life in my stories. So don't limit yourself to any of the groups I go into. So for instance, <laughs> this is a good example. I'm a mom and I searched mom in Facebook groups in Discover. And it came, I found one that said White Claws Mom. I don't drink White Claws. I think they're disgusting, but I'm a mom. So I went into there and I said, I did a selfie of me and I said, thank you for the post. Uh, thank you for adding me. With this selfie of me, it makes I'm a mom excited to be here. I had like 60 followers from that group alone just because I made a thank you for adding me post. And it's in a group that I just relate by being a mom. So don't limit yourself to anything at all. Expand your network every single way you can. Go into you when you go into groups, you can hit that discover button and then you can search. Search anything. Search not only dog, but search husky dog or whatever it is. If you have a passion for dogs on your in your branding. Or not only don't only search boy mom, but search soccer boys or whatever it is that your kids are into, really go deeper and a little bit more detailed. Um, check out those groups. I will always make a welcome post. So when I was talking about groups the other day, some one girl was like, but some groups don't let you market thrive. I said, exactly. Don't you ever go into a group to expect to market thrive. That's not what the groups are for. Yeah, it would be great to go in a group of 3 million people and make a thrive post, but that's, you can't do that. And they'll kick you out. The point of groups, you guys, is to get a bunch of, you have a bunch of strangers from all over the world in one place into a group that is active. If people are in there and they're commenting on stuff, they're active. They have time. They're in a Facebook group, okay? So it's a perfect spot. Make a thank you post, a welcome post. Um, if you're in a, whatever it is that that post is about, if you're in a hiking group, have a picture of you hiking and say thank you for the post love the outdoors whatever that's making you a relatable person in that group and then that way anyone that welcomes you or talks to you that's building that relationship already now once you actually add them on facebook they're not going to think that it's weird that you're adding you're adding a stranger because you're building that relationship in a group so that's the point of groups is to make be relatable in that group be active in that group don't just go into all these groups and try and self drive or add 8 million people because you got to actually do something. You got to build that connection and that relationship. Um, I'm in well over 3000 groups, well over 3000 groups. Am I active in all of them? No. But the point is, is I'm in all of those groups from five, th this whole time in network marketing. I add myself into a new group, like one to three new groups a day. I will never not grow my social media. That is my biggest key to <clears throat> to my to success with Lavelle is because we always need new people. We always need new faces. We always need to keep growing. We're not rebuilding. We are always building. So, <clears throat> sorry, my throat. Um, I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, if you feel stuck, if you feel frustrated, what are you doing every single day? And I'm going to tell you my thing that I do every single day is I will grow my social media. And I can prove to you that that works for me and it could for you is because with all these new faces that I'm constantly getting on my social media, my PPA rarely drops below 15. Like my, my PPA, I think right now is like 27 or 28 because I'm constantly getting new faces on my social media and all these new faces are seeing Thrive and asking me what the heck it is. Why after five years of doing Thrive every day, that people still ask me, what is Thrive? It's because I'm still getting new people. Like you gotta keep getting new people, whether that be groups, whether that be reels, whether that be TikTok. And I, I saw a comment earlier saying that like TikTok scares the death out of them. Okay, but 
I'm sure, you know, a a $5,000 check wouldn't scare you. Like you got to do something different to grow your business. Don't limit yourself because you're scared. You got to do something to jump over that curve there. (laughs) I was going to say, you know, it scares me being broke. (laughs) That scares me. (laughs) Like I would rather hop on TikTok naked than be broke. Okay. (laughs) And that's saying a lot because you all know I don't want to be naked in front of nobody. So I have a question for you about your PPA. Okay. It is. You have an amazing PPA all the time. And I know not everyone is just knocking on your door. You're knocking on their door. How do you, like, let's say with the new detox, did you just make a post or did you get in some people's inboxes and go, hey guys, got this new detox? Like, what did you do? So the thing is with, okay, especially detox or even the salted caramel, you guys, all of you guys told me how long you've been in it. Have, Have you guys, can all of you that have been in it for six plus months, Did you seriously go to every single person that has ever asked you about Thrive or that has already been a customer or anything about Thrive related? Have you told every single person you've ever talked to about detox and about salted caramel? Every person that's ever had a shake, have you told them that, hey, we have a new salted caramel? Or did you just make a post and expect them to see your post? That's what it comes down to. I absolutely made... I don't think I made a post. I put that in my stories. You guys, stories is for me is where it's at. That's the business builder. I put detox in my stories. And I think I, I got a few customers just off my stories alone. But my current and past customers, I messaged them. Hey, that's one of the people that Thrive came out with 10-day detox. I know you loved your drive before. I think this would be great. Let me know if you want some more information. Just that little little blurb alone, it's not going to turn anyone way away because it's you looking out for them. It's you giving them the best customer service about a new product launch that you truly believe that they would like. Of course, I got people, oh, not for me. I'm not a fan of detoxes, whatever. I let them know the ins and outs. If they decide no, that's completely fine. I'm still letting them know that I'm thinking about them. And when something else is going to come, I'm going to let you know there's going to be something that catches their eye. Right? Um, I was trying to read. <laughs> I was trying to read what that person just said. What they say? I know. So is that. <laughs> I, I heard not to be creepy. I'm like, um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I like, it was your thing. I utilize my voice, you know, you guys, you can make, you can a full story in your stories all day long. You can, you can send out this follow-up message with a thousand people all day long. And that's great. Once you actually record yourself talking in your stories or send out that voice memo, you guys, that is what is going to get people to believe you. People know that your unfold stories are already pre-made and it's just to, you know, kind of get a sale or let people know what the product is. But once you sit your freaking ass at your kitchen and just hit that hands-free on your Instagram and hit record and just say, you know what, this is my product and I take it because it makes me feel good or this, 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 and that you will get so much more interaction because one, people are going to hear you talk about it. So they're going to believe your confidence in the product. They're going to believe that you believe in the product and they're going to like, it'll draw their attention. I do that with my team. Probably. I don't even know how often, Hey, who all has gone live in their stories? Cause it's that important. I can guarantee you, you will get eight out of 10 customers signing over a voice flip than a unfold story. People need to hear your confidence. If people message me, hey, what is this drive? Or what's what's that sticker you're always wearing? I've been getting that all the time. What's that little sticker you're wearing? Hey, girl, it is my energy. It's something I cannot live without. Have you ever heard of Thrive or seen the Lavelle patch? That's what I put on a voice memo. They need to know that I freaking have this energy and I love this product because they could need it too. You know, I don't know. I was this weekend I was with somebody and I was voice messaging and they were like, I need to start doing that. And I'm like, I I don't know how many zooms we have to do and how many 200 yeah. days you need to hear it from 
before you start using that voice recorder button, your excitement cannot be expressed through enough emojis. Like you have to, they have to hear your yeah. voice. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. The hugest difference. And I mean, with like keeping track and following up and I mean, I guess IPAs, like I think what a lot of people get stuck in is not doing things that produce income. They're like, you know, on the Zooms and stuff and that's great, but then they're not like taking anything they're learning and applying it to their business or they're, you know, concentrating on their downline and what their downline's doing or not doing. And one thing I think that's huge is you work your own business. Like you always have a PPA. You are always worried about what Brittany's doing. And that's what you're supposed to do. Like your team will follow the lead. And just you yourself that month, when you got on that leaderboard, you went, you took yourself, okay? Yeah. Not other people. You took yourself from 40 to 80K. Like everybody's got to stop waiting around for somebody else to work their business for them. And along the way, you're going to find other people that work it with you. And you did. And that took you to, to, to you know, help take you to 200K. What are like those income producing activities? Obviously, besides posting, we know we've got to do that. But like, what are you like, dude, you guys, why are you not doing this stuff every day? So that is like, to me, that like question, it's kind of like a double-edged sword to me. So like, I could tell you guys, like, this is what I swear by. Lisa can tell you guys, you guys, this is what you got to do every day. But this was actually like, I think this was like my second rant to you yesterday, Lisa. Um, Cause this is just something that I, you know, okay. Raise your hand. You feel stuck right? You're over a year in, you guys feel stuck. You're stuck at 6K, you're stuck at 20K, you're stuck at 500 volume. You can't get promoters. You can't get promoters to want to work, right? Like, am I, am I speaking to you guys? So I understand feeling stuck. I get that. Everyone will at one point or another, I had before, you know? So now if you feel stuck, tell me why you're stuck. We not, we need to understand why you're stuck. Okay. Why do you feel that you're stuck? If you can't come up with that answer, then this is what we need to do. Write on a piece of paper and you tell me what you do every single day. What do you do every single day to grow your business? No matter what, without fail. It could either be one thing or it could be 10 things. Or what is what do you do every single day, no matter what? Because I'll tell you what I do every single day, no matter what, is I will grow my social media every single day, no matter what. Every single day, no matter what, I will check in with my team. And every single, every single day, no matter what, I will look at my reports in my cloud. That's what I do no matter what every single day. Now, if your list of what you do every single day, no matter what, whatever you wrote down, right next to it, prove to me that that actually grows your business. Can you tell me what you do every single day actually grows your business? It's actually income growing activities, income producing activities. Because if you're going to tell me that you're on 17 Zooms in seven days and your PPA is zero, you're doing something wrong. If you wake up every single day and you fill out an IPA chart and you do your bingos or you want to black it out or whatever, every single day, no matter what, but you're stuck at 1K, you're doing something wrong. We need to figure out what is best for us and we need to realize if what we're doing every single day works for us or it really doesn't work for us. So I can tell you straight up, like what I was told to do five years ago, I don't do anymore. As our business grow, we need to grow as our business grows. I'm not, I don't do the same things that I do five years ago. There are things that everyone could or should be doing every single day, but you got to make sure that you're doing it every single day that works for you. And it's actually working in your business. Like I was telling you guys earlier, I can prove that growing my social media every day works for me because it reflects in my PPA. It reflects with all the messages of people asking what drive is because I'm getting new people. I'm signing drive. So how can you, what are you guys doing every day that actually works for you? And take the day to try and understand that. If you, if you look at your list 
and you say um adding 10 new friends a day is something that i will do every single day it's in my checkbox but how have those 10 new friends a day reflected over to your business or whatever it is you know what i mean like i actually lisa i think it was on in one of your new your new group that you created somebody had I think it was nine Zooms in a week that they say that they're on no matter what, every, no matter what they're on these Zooms. And then their PPA was zero. I'm like, okay, I can't even hop on nine Zooms every single day or every single week. I'm like, did I just, oh, whoops, just a second. Sorry, just got a call. <laughs> I thought I dropped it again. Um, I can't even hop on that many that, I'm like, I'm growing my business. You know what I mean? Like I get on the Zooms that I need to get on, that I know that I need to get on, but you can't take too much time away from growing your business. You've got to have a, a balance, right? Well, especially when people are, their main concern is time. Like I have yeah. kids and I'm working a full-time job. If nine hours a week is going into a Zoom, those could be nine hours going into your business. Like I that's do a have a time. Yeah, that's like a ton of time. Like Pick a couple Zooms a week where you feel like you get the most tips and the most value. And then all your other hours should be spent growing your personal business. Like yeah. it, it just, and you're right. Oh my gosh, Brittany, like nail on the head. If you have been doing the same thing for a year and it's not producing anything, it is time to figure out what you're not doing right. And it could be your excitement level. It could be you're not using the voice recorder. It could be that you're not doing enough in your stories. It could be like, you have to go evaluate what it is for you, okay? Because obviously the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over, expecting a different result. And if you've been doing the same thing for a year and your PPA is still zero, okay, what do I need to do differently? Maybe I need to take something I'm learning on one of these Zooms that I have not tried yet and step into the unknown and do it. Look, this is uncomfortable. Like, th this isn't hard. My freaking 12 year old, 15 year old daughter could do this. No problem. It's not hard. It's just uncomfortable for people. It's stepping out of your comfort zone, doing some things that you've never done before. And that like, we don't like that feeling like as human beings, we like to stay in our comfort zone where we feel comfortable when we're, we were like, where we don't feel like we're going to get like, you know, teased or somebody's going to judge us or what would a somebody else thinking? And at the end of the day, none of those people pay your bills. Like none of those people, you have to realize that until you are able to step outside of your comfort zone and do some different things, you're going to stay stuck. Like you're going to be on that miracle realm. And I don't care how many Zooms you attend. <laughs> I don't care how much knowledge you have. Like you're going to stay stuck. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, we've been in this five years. We just celebrated our fifth year anniversary in this company. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows. I mean, you know, and I love your story because it really took you two years to go, okay, I'm doing the damn thing. And I think there's a lot of people on here that think, well, if I don't see success right away or no, it's when you decide, like you said, you made a decision that month, you went and got that bonus. And the only difference between that month and the two years previous to that month was you made the decision. You decided yeah. and you went for it. And we know how powerful that is to just decide and then make no excuses and do whatever it takes to make it happen. Um, with that said, I mean, since growing a business with a large organization, what are some hurdles personally or even things you've, or mistakes you've seen people make underneath of you that you think people need to avoid you guys honestly if you like kind of like what you just said if you compare your your success to somebody else time frame matter you are absolutely holding yourself back uh i mean if this your success in this business has nothing to do with my success like it 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 has nothing to do like I, I there's there's a couple of things I could say. I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, well, my leader doesn't do this or my team. Oh, my gosh. How many times have you guys said out of your mouths or heard somebody say out of their mouths? Well, my team isn't doing anything this month. My team isn't doing that this month. Well, OK, unless your your PV, your personal volume is two hundred thousand, you still have work to do. 
I, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. I hate when I hear, I mean, even my leaders, my team is slow. My team isn't doing anything. My team doesn't want to do this. Okay. It's not on your team to grow your check. It's not, it's not on your team to get you from 40 to 80 K or 80 to 200 K. It is on you. Do you know what I mean? Um, like I said, unless you are, unless your PV is 200,000, then you have some more work to do still. Um, so definitely don't wait around for somebody else to grow your business for you because it's on you. It's, it's, it, this is your business. Um, and don't compare where you're at in this business to where somebody else is at in the same amount of time as you, or they're up higher than you in less time. You're not doing anything wrong. You know, I know that's the immediate thing. You know, I'm doing something wrong. This isn't for me. Why did she promote before me? She just joined. I understand that. I understand that seeing somebody promote faster than you or quicker or whatever, it kind of like punches you in the gut. That's human nature. That's fine. But you can't let that get you down. That can't let you deter your, your success. Um, it's just not your journey. It's not your timing. And you are where you're at for a reason. Somebody is going, is still watching you. You guys, as I feel, somebody is still watching me that hasn't even messaged me yet. Actually, I just got a mini experience in somebody's hands this week. I even asked her to make a post. She made a post and she said, I've been watching this girl. She tagged me for five years about Thrive. And I finally got some in my hand. She watched me for five years. I didn't even realize that because that was the first time we've talked. Like, but she made that post. People are still watching you. People are waiting just for the right time for them or the right product to speak to them or something. They're waiting for something, but you need to stick through it. You need to stay consistent because I promise you, it's just going to take one person to be like, okay, I'm ready. And that one person can make you 200K. Okay. I, I've had two people this year alone join me that have been watching me for four years. And those two people went 12K in like a heartbeat. Like people are still watching you. You need to stay consistent. Don't compare your yourself to anybody else and just, just stick with the damn thing. That's all you got to do. Well, and it's like, I think a lot of times we get in our own way because we were so sidetracked by what our upline isn't or isn't do is or isn't doing what our downlines aren't doing. And we're not focused on our own businesses. You know, we're looking left and right and all around. And yeah, can I want to design on Pinterest real quick? Do you have any like examples of designs that you do? Oh no, there we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> unmute. Um, so I just feel like right now is such a critical time. Like people dismiss the months of November and December sometimes, and they sit back and they're like, well, I'm just going to take a little break or nobody's working or, you know, all this stuff. And we kind of touch base on that. But the next two months, I feel like what you are made of in network marketing, you show in your slowest months, because if you're not consistent this month and next month with planting seeds and getting up every day and running your business, like you are, uh, your PPA is a thousand and it's zero. Like you've got to act like that every day because once January hits, people aren't going to be prepared. Um, what do you say to those people that are like in a funk and they're like, I just feel defeated. I lost rank a long time ago. I just don't know how to get back into this. I want to get back into it, but I don't know how, what would you say to those people? Well, I, I've been hearing that all week, honestly, and I get it. One of the first things I ask people is, what do you do for self-development? Honestly, a lot of the times when you, when you like get down on yourself or you just, your mind messes with you, what do you, we need to do something nine times out of 10, those people that are like coming saying, I'm in a funk, I don't know what to do. They don't do anything for self-development. And I will always preach that because it's helped me tremendously. And I think a lot of people overlook that aspect. And it's whatever, because, you know, you're, in, you're in charge of your own mindset. Like it, you, you create it yourself. So if you need to do something to get yourself out of a funk, you need to figure out, out what it is that you need to do. So I, my, I love Trent Shelton. He's a motivational speaker. Um, I listen to his podcast. I watch him live. I sign up for his text. He texts me every day. 
But like, that is what, what I feel that I always need to keep my mind in like a badass mode. But that's like what he does for me, like yells at me. <laughs> that's my personality. You guys need to do something. If you're not doing anything with self-development, you need to do something, whether that was to a podcast, read a book, a, attend a certain Zoom that specifically speaks to you every single week, whatever it is, you need to do something and that will help keep your mind right. You know, it's just, it's certain words, it's certain, certain things that can just help switch your mind and be like, no, snap the hell out of it. I need to do this. But you need to figure out what's right for you. That's the biggest thing, honestly. Yeah. And I think you're so right. Self-development is so underrated, but it is. It, it is like, but if you're not, it, you have to have something, you know what I mean? Maybe, and not everybody's going to be the same. Like you well, said, it's like, yoga, you know what I mean? Like it could, be, yeah. it could be, it could be to meditate. It could be like, whatever it is, but you need to do something. You need to figure out what speaks to you. That's good for you. And you need to do that every single day. You know, you, you got to do something, do that for 20 minutes before you pick up your phone in the morning, whatever it is. Um, I want to just add something. It's not on, it's not on your question. It's a side thing I thought of um, that absolutely gets forgotten about is we get so, we, the first thing you think about posting every single day is three steps, right? Everyone hops in their stories, look at my energy capsules, look at my DFT, super mom, right? That's what we do every single day. When was the last time you guys posted about skincare or did a live on skincare? And I'm saying this is because we overlook so many di different products all the time. I signed seven customers last week on skincare alone, alone. I had all of these people following me and honestly didn't care about the three-step system. It didn't speak to them. I did a live of me showing my skincare. I'm like, this is all that I use. I love it. Look at my dead skin exfoliator. I talked about it. I did it and I signed seven customers. But people, people wanted to see something. People, people were watching my stuff, but they didn't care about the three steps. They didn't care about my energy capsules. They didn't feel that they needed that. But they needed skincare. When was the last time you, you talked about the nighttime routine, the rest, the recharge, the balance, the biotic? or the move or the form or hair, skin and nails. We need to talk more about other products if not every single person is buying your three-step system. Oh stop my God, that's the, so good. Stop like doing people the same forget thing. we have all these other products. Yeah, We're, we, just, so we just get so caught up on the three-step system, which yeah, obviously it's the best thing that we have. It's what everyone needs, but if, not every single person that is viewing your stories is buying the three-step system. Give them something else to see. Amen. Because not everybody is going to need what you, I mean, if you're yeah. only posting about the three steps, you might reach a whole nother market. And I always like to use wellness Wednesday as like a day to like talk about the other products. Cause I'll like take a product and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to like share something about wellness that this product helps with and then somehow incorporate this product into that so at least like even if you get to a day of the week where you're doing it or something but don't forget we have these other products and I don't you agree that you can be super salesy in your in your stories that's exactly what I was you I but you it can also be super simple and it can catch somebody's attention so easily so like three weeks ago I think I got like I don't even know how many customers on blast alone because I made a post in my stories of my daughter's eating breakfast. And I said, I, I said the, the breakfast that I made and I said, what, and drinking their favorite antioxidant drink juice. That's what I said. I didn't say, oh my God, blast, you're getting all this, this and that. But I had moms being like, what's the antioxidant juice you have your kids drink? My kids won't take anything. My kids won't, my, my kids won't take vitamins or anything. I'm like, girl, it seriously tastes like a berry juice. My kids ask for it every morning. Boom, blast sold. Boom, blast sold. So yeah, you can be super salesy because it's your stories, but you can also make it so freaking simple and still catch people's attention. Amen. Oh my gosh. And it's so true. Like we can get them. It's so crazy how some people aren't 
interested in the Thrive experience, but yet if you can get them on one of our other products, suddenly the door opens for you to now share the Thrive experience with them. It, yep. Because if something else works for them or they like something else, then they're more likely to go, well, what is that stuff? Like now they show interest in other products if you can just get them on one thing. Okay, we're coming up at the top of the hour. Um, do you have any last words? Like anything you that's on your heart that you just want to put out? Up, you're muted. I can't hear you. I have no idea why I did that. There you um, go. <laughs> honestly, you guys, your success is on you. It is, it's up to you to go keep re VIPing yourself. Go get two and two, go get two and two repeat. It's up to you to guide people. You can, you can guide them so much, but your success, your next rank, your, where you want to be, you getting Porta, where were you guys, you guys Kana. um, all of that, it's on you guys. Um, so, you know, just, just to, have your mindset to where I need to do this. I have no other choice. I got to get this done and you will, but you can't have any excuse be in that way. I could have had every single freaking excuse in the world that November when I was on that leaderboard, every excuse, I didn't even let sleep be an excuse. I know that I wanted to quit my job to have more time, a better, a better life with my children. So I didn't use my children as an excuse. I didn't use them and me having to be with them or raise them or whatever as an excuse. Do what you need to do and that'll take you to the next level. Britt, thank you so much, especially for doing this last minute. And I can't stop looking at your nails and how it exactly matches that little part of your shirt where the D is. Like it's oh, funny. Exactly. <laughs> that. I'm like, dude, did she plan that? I'm actually sitting outside the nail salon right now to get them repainted because I'm going to Boston. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the whole time I'm staring. I'm like, oh my God, did she plan that? Um, I <laughs> thank you so much for hopping on today and sharing. And honestly, I love your raw and realness because, you know, I don't, <laughs> sugar coating does not help people grow. Yeah. Um, so I really, really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for, thank all of you guys for getting on today and, and joining us. Um, Britt, thanks so much. And guys, one more time, if you're an 80K, 200K, again, you don't have to be holding rank. Um, message me. I want to get you on the schedule. Um, or if I haven't interviewed you in a while, let's get you on the schedule before the end of the year so people can hear your story. Um, we get paid in one minute. So make your payday post. Don't forget to let people know what Thrive is doing for your family, your life, especially this time of year. You guys, don't forget, we can help somebody put $1,320 in their pocket before Christmas. That's huge. I would have done anything for my family. I would have tried. I mean, you have nobody, you have no idea who is in your inbox right now or watching your posts or looking at your stories. Are you, are you looking at who's looking at your stories? Who are those people? Those people go look at their Facebook pages. They might need what you have right now, right? And you just have to let them know that that it's available, that they can run after some extra cash before Christmas. So don't underestimate the power of those VIP bonuses. Um, detox is out, you guys. Jason Camper is doing a call tonight. Um, and then if you have any guests, I'm doing a... Um, opportunity event tonight that you can send your guests to and yeah i mean let's make it happen two months left before uh we hit the end of the year and january's right around the corner so everything you guys do now everything you do now is going to dictate what happens january through may so y'all it's time to wake up get up do the do <laughs> all the things it is time to get off our butts and make it happen. Um, I love you guys. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Same time, same place. Um, new leaders sharing their story. Be here. And um, it's the same link. So you guys can save it on your phones. Thanks, Britt. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.